One of my favorite things to do creatively is take something that is always the same, like a product, which is what I do most of my work on, and make it a little more visually interesting than it is on its own in a lot of different ways. And sometimes it's hard to come up with ways to do that repetitively, but the method I'm going to share today has been one that I have gone back to to uh, make products more interesting in their own ways and bring a little bit of extra life um, on a lot of different occasions. So uh, the video that is playing on the screen right now is what I'm going to be talking about today and showing you how to do in Cinema 4D and Redshift. Um, and basically all this is gonna do is animate um, different displacement maps. I'm actually gonna merge two together and I'll talk about how to do that. And it'll give us this really cool effect that brings life to each individual pixel on this product label. And you can do this with almost anything. Um, so that, uh, or I guess you pretty much can do it with anything. So it's, uh, it's a really cool technique and I've used it a lot and I just figured that I would share it because that video got a lot of really good feedback from some creative people. So it's really simple. Let's uh, just kind of jump into it. I will switch my scene over and we'll get started in Cinema 4D. So here we are and I'm not going to be showing this labeling process today. Um, this is a pretty standard kind of procedure for me. Um, again, we're using Cinema 4D and Redshift, the newest versions as of 7.12.22. Um, I'm not going to be showing this labeling process. If you would like um, for me to show how I labeled this product, um, I would be happy to do so. I just kind of got a nice little um, nice label with some bump and a chrome chrome map in the middle here so nothing insane but if you would like a video on the texturing process for something like this or wine bottles or anything like that let me know I'll be happy to do that one what we're gonna do to create the effect you saw in the beginning is merge two displacement maps together and then animate them so uh, or rather animate one of them and then just kind of play around with our um, displacement map as a whole to create the final effect. So the first thing that I want to do, or the first map that I want to create is actually going to be for the pixels of this label. And this will be pretty much a standard um, displacement process in Redshift. I'm just gonna copy and paste my label texture. Um, so this is just like the base color uh, label that I started with. And I'm gonna hit C on my keyboard and add in a displacement. And if I plug this guy into the texture map and the out here into displacement, um, you'll see that the pixels on my label are now, that aren't pure black, to be clear, are now, um, they're displaced. And I forgot to mention, you're gonna need a Redshift object tag for this. So uh, you'll just click on your label and go um, tags, and I think it's render tag, Redshift object. Come in here, go to geometry, override, and then enable displacement. Um, I leave all this on the default and I control my displacement in here mostly because I don't ever need extra. If I did need extra, I would come into this geometry tab and do this. For most things, like a high res label like this, you're gonna need tessellation. If I turn this off, you'll see that there's just not nearly enough density in this um, model for this to work with. So tessellation is basically like subdivision, but different. Um, I can explain that in the future if I need to. Um, so yeah, this is our first displacement map. And so you can see like the base effect is kind of done um, of just, you know, visually acquiring this kind of effect. Um, if I kind of just scroll around for a second here, this is a really cool sort of look that we've got going on. Um, so if this was all you wanted and you didn't really want to add anything to it, what you could do to animate this is literally um, just come into your displacement and you could uh, just animate this scale property here. Or uh, likewise, you could come into the geometry tab on your object and you could work around with these tiny values here and just animate those. But 
Um, I would like to give a little bit of life. You saw kind of the waviness in, in mine that I did before. So I want to blend a couple of things together to make that happen. Um, and what I'm going to do for that is use just a pretty regular displacement map. So this will just be a white, black, and gray, just, um, just a grayscale value texture. It can be pretty much anything. And this is where this effect gets really customizable because you can kind of do whatever you want. In mine specifically, I use something from this Retina Pack Pro. This is in my Gumroad library. I don't even remember where I bought it, um, but I will leave a link in the description if you would like to support the creator of the Retina Pack. Um, and I think I used maybe something like this. These are just insanely high res. Um, honestly, way too high res for what I'm doing at the moment. Like most of that detail is just useless to me at the moment. Um, but I'm just gonna drag this in. And so now what we need to do is blend these together. And uh, then we're gonna animate it with some noise. And that's gonna be, that's gonna be a really fun process. So to use a displacement blender, which is what you have to do here. If I hit C, I'll bring in a displacement blender. You actually have to use two displacements on their own. Um, so for our texture map here, we're going to um, go and add in another displacement. Okay, we're gonna plug this in to the texture map out into this, uh, oh yeah. Okay, so our base displacement here is gonna be our layer or our uh, label, sorry. So now our, our displacement blender is what's gonna go into our final output here. And so everything disappears for now since nothing's plugged in here. Our label file is going to be our base input. So that is the base um, geometry, or that is the base displacement that I want. And you can see that what we had before kind of came back there. Now I would like to add in this retina displacement. First, I'm gonna plug this in to the displacement output just to kind of show you what this looks like. Um, it's gonna be very different. Uh, yeah, it's kind of just all over the label. It's a little bit of a mess, um, but there are some really creative lines in here and that's what I liked about these retina files. That's why I use them for this. Um, so I'm gonna break that connection and this is going to come into our displacement blender as in, uh, layer zero input. And then this will go into our displacement. And so now it is only outputting our base input because we haven't given this any kind of weight to apply the second, um, the second map to. And so, what we have to do to kind of make this into a subtle effect that can just kind of wave through what we're doing, uh, we're gonna add in a noise. And I prefer a max on noise to a, uh, to a redshift noise for obvious reasons. I think it's actually legacy now that uh, max on owns redshift. And so this noise we can take and plug in as our layer one blend weight and at the moment, that's probably going to make a big change because it's so kind of muddy. Yeah, it's just basically letting the whole thing through. And so now we're gonna just kind of play with this noise. Um, I'm gonna take the octaves up to 20. I'm gonna make it Luca or Nakai probably. Um, still not gonna actually show me anything useful. Bring my low clip way up, my high clip way down. Really high contrast is what I'm going for here. And this is all kinda updating now. Yeah, so you can see. So now we have this really interesting uh, thing where most of our displacement is our label. Um, but as you can see, these white areas in this noise that we added in are showing through on the other displacement, um, which is a really fun thing because now we can come down to this speed and we can animate this noise. So I like mine to be so subtle. 
Um, so I usually put this at like a 0.3. If you want it to be a little faster, you can put it at a one or whatever the scale of your scene requires. Um, I am going to take the scale of my noise to 2.5 question mark. I would like a little, little bigger spots. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to reseed this though. Just play around with this until you get something that you like. And so you're going to have to take my word for it a little bit here because this is going to take a while to update. But our noise is moving now. Yeah, there you go. You can kind of see it there. Our noise is moving now. And so there's kind of a wavy effect going on here. Um, you can see just as I scrub through... It updates very slowly, but you can kind of see this wave happening. And so that's really fun. And from here, all that you really have to do to animate this is to do your cameras, to mess with the animation speed on your noise that is showing your, uh, your second displacement through. And then um, towards the end, as I like start to reveal the product, you will actually want to come into your displacements and set them both to zero. And so you can animate the actual displacement amount on each of your uh, your displacements individually. I think I probably need to resend this. Yeah, and so now, as you wanna reveal your product, you get right here and you have just kind of a clean, your clean label back. Um, Similarly, you can play with these values all on their own. Um, if I set this to like a 0.3, it's probably gonna give us something pretty cool. Just a really subtle displacement on just the logo itself. Probably gotta resend this again. I had to restart Cinema 4D there. But uh, yeah, as you can see, we have this really cool effect going on uh, with turning the displacements down. So at the moment, it's only label. You can add but I mean, with this, with this workflow, you can do whatever you want. And that's, I, that's really why I wanted to show it is because it's so versatile. I could create a custom map to put some things that I wanted very specifically in here. I could do, um, I could do like a gobo or something that would reveal this, you know, with like uh, light coming through a window or something like that. So there are so many different uses for this kind of effect and it's all completely procedural. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want, and you won't break anything. You'll have an amazing result pretty much every time. So just a little quick video on how to do something that I've been doing a lot recently, and I hope that it has helped you in one way or another. Um, be sure to leave any questions in the comments below. I answer every single comment that the channel gets. You can also follow and DM me on Instagram at jbrush4d, just like the YouTube channel. Um, I appreciate everybody's support, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.